Hi, my salutations. How are you? Hope all is well. Blessings to you and yours. So, the full moon in Aries, Gedanta, Pisces, Aries, but it's just Gedanta, right? Gedanta is not Gedan, Don is not, and then Ante is at the end. So, it's a not at the end. It's like, ah. Uh, you might get knotted up, feel a little butterflies or some anxiety or some rage or you dig on saying go from water to fire. We're 70 percent water moving in the fire. Maybe your blood boiling. Maybe you get like it's, it's some steam occurring in your mind and, you know, some fogginess or cloudiness that occurs due to, you know, this elements playing. Right. So salutations to Sri Ganesha, who has a curved trunk who has a large body and whose splendor is similar to a million suns. Oh, Deva, please, un please make my undertakings free of obstacles by extending your blessings and my work always. So th this is the chart right here for the full moon and Aries. I put moon on the ascendant. But in Washington, D.C., the Ascendant is in Libra, so it shows like a focus on partnerships, interaction, and business. Uh, sun is with Mercury, so it shows like intelligence, having an intelligent understanding in the purpose to initiate and create partnerships. You know what I'm saying? Moon is in Aries. Moon and Aries is fullness of bold, boldness, like bold emotions, bold instincts, bold interactions, bold motivations, having fullness of courage and bravery, you know what I'm saying, in order to get into any type of relationship, whether it be romantic, filial, uh, friendship, or business, ideally one will have to have courage, you gotta have some willpower, you have to put effort in. Mars, Mars with Moon makes a, it's like a wealthy, worldly kind of yoga. So there's a person that understands material matters. They understand, okay, like, ideally Moon with Mars shows like a ability in real estate. So it's like, okay, they, this property is open for sale. Let me get on that now. And that's, that's kind of that energy or whatever. So full moons bring revelations, realizations. And, and, and so full moon is the outward representation, outward manifestation of whatever things was uh, occurring during the new moon. The new moon was in Virgo in a sign or in a star represented by a hand. It's about getting a grip on reality. Exaltation of Mercury. Mercury is dual, Vir Virgo is dual. The hostage is the hand being able to kind of like manipulate, adapt, and work with this idea of duality, the ups and downs in life, you dig know what I'm saying? The successes and failures, you're seeing them just kind of like, I'm still getting a grip on what's real, like holding on to that and letting go. It's an open hand or a closed fist, so getting a grip on things and letting go of things. This full moon is Pisces, Aries, Gedanta, so Pisces is letting go and Aries is taking charge, you dig know what I'm saying? Letting go of bad habits, bad diet plans, and stuff like that. Um, bad associations, murder rules over friends, relatives, and stuff like that. So, bad associations, you might let go of that and then get a grip on uh, your health, your routines, what you're working on, the people that you work with, getting a grip, taking charge of that. So Virgo is the field of organization, Aries is the field of action. Get organized, creating a routine or a schedule, and then now you act on it. You got the fullness of courage, energy, and act, uh, energy and willpower to act upon whatever that schedule or organization you want to do. You know what That habit, getting rid of habits, picking up new habits. So Moon and Aries both, this half of the month, it's thought to be more aggressive and fast paced, more tense and eager, more fiery and passionate. Right. Sun is in Libra, shows purpose to create partnerships, purpose to initiate the partnerships and relations and business and interaction. Right. Moon is full, 
full moon in Aries lets us know it kind of teases us about that. Like I said, in order to get into a relationship or a partnership, you gotta have courage, you gotta have willpower. In the Kama Sutra and other manuals or manuscripts on love, on the art of love, they say you know, men that have success, the, the men that have success with women, right? the main trait, the first one is courage, boldness, bravery. Uh, you, <laughs> a guy might have something to say, something real meaningful, and a or plan on it. Or, uh, but if he not bold enough and brave enough, and he don't got the courage to kind of like put it out there, or even just initiate a conversation, right, in the air sign, a conversation or an interaction, then it's like, okay, well, you never, you know. Who, who's gonna come around? Endless people gonna come around when you never sit up there and just get to meet anybody. You dig know what I'm saying? Um, same with friends. Mars is natural character for the third house. Third house shows how you meet people. Uh, third house shows like younger siblings, relatives to a degree, but it also shows close friends and stuff like that. You dig know what I'm saying? Um, but you, it, it gotta be effort. You put effort into your friendships. You put effort into your relationships and interactions. You gotta have courage because everybody ain't gonna like you. So you still have to have boldness and resilience, or, or, or rather, like a certain amount of perseverance. You gotta still move forward if you seek it. You're gonna there will be rejections. Well, in the books on the art of love. And aphorisms on love, they say oftentimes like you can be bold. Men uh that's 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 the trait women like. But 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 I guess cause it's bold and that it's Mars and more boldness and courage is Martian in nature. It can be a little like oh intimidating or whatever. And oftentimes like the women they were saying will shrink away from it, but it's not it's not you know, you still have to have courage to pursue again. Like, oh yeah, 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 that's fine. <laughs> he was a little aggressive, but I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> you feel me? And then whatever Mars looking at and aspect, he wants to conquer and dominate. So ideally, that's like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? It's some, whatever. So this full moon, let me see my time. I don't say my time. This full moon is good for fire and air signs. There's maybe more challenges for the earth and water signs. Fire and air signs because it's karma and dharma houses. You know what I'm saying? So it's like fun and good for you and, and, and fortunate. Fun or fortunate. Or interesting. And then earth and water signs is in y'all houses of accumulation and Motion liberation. So your challenge is just more so uh, physical. So you might not be friends. You might have to go to work. Some might need to meditate. The emotional world might be a little hot right now. You know what I'm saying? So Jasmine Bowling, Monology, five questions to ask. Have I been too hot headed? Selfish or argumentative this month? Have I been hot headed? Nah. I attribute that to the fact that I don't really eat animals. I don't even really eat spicy things because my Ayurvedic constitution is really just pitta. So I have to go towards the sweet, cool kind of taste. I, I gotta stay away from pungent, which is spicy, and sour. I don't like sour things. You know what I'm saying? Two, have I been going too fast or been impulsive this month? No, I actually have been kind of like it's all. A, it's been about pace. I realized like what my pace is a lot more this month. Like, you feel me? I'm starting to understand the pacing. Everybody don't really do the same. And we not gonna fault nobody if they slower and shit like that. It's just don't don't be trying to pick up the pace and then be getting in the way. 
Have I been impulsive? Nah, I feel like I could be a bit more bold, but I know I can get actually really impulsive. I understand, like, no, I get really fucking impulsive. Too impulsive. And I, but I do, I, I tell people, I be number one of them. So, you grow up 28 side of return. You grow up, you be like, all right. I, I used to tell people before, like, hey, look, I could feel myself about to do too much. Just let me know. So three, have I been brash, blunt, or too competitive? I have been blunt. My my man's told me it's like, bro, we 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 fam, you cool. <laughs> it's just I be having to get this shit out. I got a thing. I'm saying burgers, but it's a lot of shit. <coughs> you feel me? But they mainly be burgers. Fucking burgers is. You see me or somebody eating a burger, give me guns. Hey, well, I want to get you good. So I'm about to start throwing rocks. It ain't about trying to see somebody hard. I'm just about to throw rocks. It's like, damn. Uh, four, have I ignored other people's finer sensibilities? This is a strange question for me to answer because, in a way, Finer sensibilities is like you might it might be them subtle auric communications that you might feel things that seem like telepathy or something like that and it's like ooh based on auras and human design it's like I'm actually supposed to be the one to initiate and have the courage and willpower to talk and hey you know can I ask you this or whatever but it's like I really don't be having shit to say no more. Even this, I be trying to keep this less than 20 minutes, so. This is strange question. I don't know. I have ignored, like, I've, you know, I go in two periods of withdrawal and being out. But it's real quick. It's more withdrawal than it is, like, out. And I have ignored that feeling where it's like oh this person might want to talk a little bit more than a short convo or this person might want to just chat with you and shit and it's like I just like don't I don't really I don't have the capacity and shit <laughs> feel me especially because a lot of times the main it seems like the main mode of communication is text And since using like voice memos more, it's like even those, it's like you might actually like motherfucker that do voice memos, they that's a yapper. I be yapping. And that's not really what text for. It's like text is just short and sweet communication. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or it's like, hey look, I'm gonna send you this this the time is without it. So five. Have I had enough fun? Have I had enough fun? What is fun to me? I mean, no, I haven't. I be having little thoughts to myself. I be trying to, like, I don't have time to write them down. So I might, you know, that's why I record myself. But, nah, I could use some more fun. I ain't going back. Truth be told, my nigga, this full moon is in Gadanta and my seventh house from Ascendant and fifth house from Moon. So it's like, truth be told, I, I, no, no, I have not had enough fun. And I don't in October, not so much. Like this part of these months, these next couple months, not really. You feel me? I ain't been to a museum in a while, my nigga. You feel me? I go. I, I do go to the park. I ain't go. I ain't had a board meeting on Tuesdays. Feel me? I have read a person that sit in a a room with like red lights might actually be depressed. I was like, is that red? No. Nah. I was like, I don't know. Depression come from repressed anger, and like I said, I have not been hot headed, so I'm not. I, I don't feel that. But yeah, I probably could have some more fun. I just want to read all these little 
manuscripts on the art of love. I really just want to make love. I ain't going to bat. Oh, my internet went out. I'll get rid of this little joint. Alright, the message is that life is not a race, nor is it a competition. Find a balance between your needs and those of your significant other or best friends. All right. So, other things, Mars is going into the fall sign of cancer. So, it's like misdirected anger. Mood swings, volatile, volatility, unpredictable. Like you might just lash out, and it might be at the wrong person. It show it show a lot of defensiveness. Mars is in a not in an enemy sign, but he's just not acting right. He kind of aspected all enemy signs from Cancer, so it's like in his mind he just surrounded and see just, just, just quarrels and stuff like that right venus has moved into scorpio venus and scorpio is weak unusual it's seven signs away from home so therefore it's kind of in a weak in one of its weakest positions outside of you know like a fall sign in virgo so scorpio is the private it's dick and pussy it's 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 uh the sexual organs it's all the hidden reproductive organs too right um and then venus is the hormones and fluid so if venus and scorpio and it's not strong in scorpio it's showing that the fluids of the reproductive organs is kind of like the reproductive organs themselves are suffering you know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, it just came out right before this full moon. It had just come out that I guess some type of <clears throat> some type of Twitter porn star it was uh, infecting a whole bunch of people. But that 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 probably was already going on. Venus and Virgo. You dig what I'm saying? Virgo is a sign of health. But if Venus not operating correctly, y'all not actually having one. You not having good sex. That's a fact. Most people most people cannot fuck. You dig what I'm saying? And nasty shit is equated to skill, and that's not that's not what the scriptures say. You dig what I'm saying? So when you do those things and you're not having the you're not having righteous sex or good sex, uh, the pleasure principle has to manifest. And pleasure after you get that little you you chasing all that abundance and pleasure and you, you know that obsession rewards pleasure. You just like gotta feel a lot of pain, and the pain has to last way longer, at least twice as long as the pleasure did, and it's gotta be twice as painful as the pleasure was good to you, or may have you perceived it that way. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, but other than that, Scorpio, the sign shows how Venus shows what. So how and what women? What's, what the fuck is going on with women? How is the condition with women right now? It's intense, scandalous, unpredictable. It's a, you know, eighth house. Scorpio is eighth house. That show chronic ailments. Things that's like, oh, like, you actually would. It, eighth house shows events that force one to transform and surrender a certain aspect of life that's associated with that. Planets in Scorpio undergo intense transformations. They can't, they cannot avoid it. Any planet in Scorpio or Aquarius cannot avoid that transformation or uh, in the sense of Aquarius, that disinterest, that detachment, right? So sex, themes surrounding sex totally transformed. And from that scandal with the Twitter porn star, uh, whole bunch of women got herpes or some type of std something that all you ha you would have to surrender your sex life to a degree you are forced to surrender and transform your sex life you dig what i'm saying what's y'all fucking raw fool anyway and how you how y'all doing this 
and you try and market it and you publicizing it and all of that, right? But you're not even doing it in a in a in a in a way that preserves. We talk of Mars preservation and stuff. Like it, it even keep it preserve your reputation, your life moving forward. But hey, you dig on saying because the manuscripts on the art of love also say that like when you do things that's not righteous and not of the conduct of Kama Deva and Lord Shukra and Venus, you kind of take away from your life a lot, a lot, continuously. So you dig on saying yeah, a lot of y'all think that shit cute. It'd be cool if y'all knew how to fuck. You got a bunch of people fucking ugh, like oh like, I shouldn't talk too much. Let me get this out though. But it's like you you sitting there, you doing something, motherfucker wanna try something with you, and you kinda you know you ain't fucking with it. You know that's not this kinda this ain't right. But you know. Okay. And then you do it and you kinda regretting that shit. You kinda looking at that shit like what the fuck? What the fuck? I that should be propaganda. But Fucking do something and it might be can you do it. But where's the pleasure that came from that? A lot of those things. It's like, where is it? Is it just a visual thing? But we gotta understand too, like if it's kinks, cause Venus and Scorpio is kinky as shit. Secret uh pleasures. Intense, uh unpredictable. Not necessarily shameful, but you know, it's just private. It's like, ain't, uh, don't tell nobody about this type of enjoyment. Venus and Scorpio. So, bug catchers. There are people that like, oh yeah, they enjoy uh, being unsafe. They enjoy unsafe sex because it fulfills the kink of catching a bug. Like, there are bug catchers out there. There are bug givers. There are people that Venus and Scorpio are going to have some resentments and some bitterness. So, therefore, there are people out there that, oh, yeah, they prey on motherfuckers. Like, oh, yeah, you you are, you are you fall into the category of those that are easy to seduce. Or you might be a trick or you might be a press-ass nigga. Okay, I got you. I'll let you fuck. I ain't going to fuck raw. That's everything you ever wanted right there. You just want to fuck anyway. You don't care about who you fuck, what you fuck, if if what the what the consequences are. So, you know, come on, let's do this. You feel me? They tell stories about individuals like that. You might not hear it, but it goes on. Somebody got burnt one time, and they took that so hard. It, you know, some Scorpio thing. They was like, I got to stay somebody. I have to get my get back. And then they just start doing things in order to, like, seduce and manipulate men or women or both. And now they just sit up there and a whole host of individuals try like just either they it, it's so many more that probably don't even know they got it. Some people know they got it and that don't want to go get tested or go get the results to prove it because it's like I just don't even want to think about it. So they might just start lying to themselves and convince themselves, hey, nothing's going on. And it ain't this, it ain't that. You feel me? Suspend disbelief, cognitive dissonance. So, hey, look, yeah. So, Scorpio and Aquarius are it's just, it's just a note. Scorpio and Aquarius are karmic signs, the most karmic signs. They, I don't even know, it's not about which one is more or less. It's like they both, Mars and Saturn, respectively, Tomasic, malefic planets. Rahu and K2. Malefic, eh, unpredictable kind of planets. They're knows They are karmic. You did not say. K two is the body of a servant, always looking backwards, always looking backwards, and and, and volatile because it's a snake. So it's always the body defensive as shit. It's just wriggle and writhe. It's just at random moments. You did not say. Just strike out and strike at anything. It don't. It has no head to see what it's attacking. It's just going to attack. It might feel a certain way. And that's how Scorpio, it feels a certain way. Okay, you got to get this. Somebody got to get this. I don't care. Right? So, planets, the karmic influence of the nose and the malefic planet Mars give a certain overwhelm at Scorpio. And the significations 
of the planets in Scorpio feel like a burden. So relationships, sex, love matters, feels like a burden. There's phobias. It's like, why should I do that? Because, ooh, it's like, so bitter, repressed, volatile, blind, fury, and rage. And the nodal influence is always looking backwards, cringing, loathing, and seething in itself, right? And then Scorpio is water, fixed water, and ruled by Mars, who is fire element. So it's, it's wet, heavy, hot, and it boils. It's a scalding kind of energy, or it can become a scalding energy. Or it could be something like a, a spring bath. So it's hot, it's like, ooh. But it's kind of, it could be relaxing after you, you know, get over the sting, the initial sting, instead of the sting on the back end. So the sting on the front end is like getting tested. The sting on the front end is going to be like getting the needle prick and getting tested and then doing your little fucking Twitter porn or some shit like that. Or then just getting busy with someone. You dig on what I'm saying? Just, all right, look, you, you have a lover. I want to love you. Would you try, like, really short and simple? And then you just, all right, let's go get the prick or whatever. You got to vet the motherfucker. You have to. You got to, Scorpio is investigate. You have to, Scorpio and Venus, you got to investigate your partners. Really understand what the fuck going on, where they coming from. So that means it's, it's Scorpio is destructive and self-destructive. Might as well just turn it inward. So now I'm just talking about Aquarius, the planets in Aquarius and their significance, it just show disinterest, total fucking detachment. Like I want nothing to do with it. But it's not a malicious obviously it's like, ah, you feel me? Like if they dealing with it, it's just cause it's karma. They just carrying out whatever karma is fixed air Saturn. So they got fixed karmas. It's like, all right, they have to deal with certain frustrations early on, but once they feel like the karma is lifted, they don't bother with it. So there's a sense of apathy too. The nodal influence of Rahu here is to always be looking forward and moving forward. It's Vata, air and space, and value wind. Rahu and Saturn is just wind. You do know what I'm saying? Wind. They moving. They need to get wind keeps us moving. Our breath keeps us moving. So they just always moving on. So the query is be like, alright, I'm done with that. I'm cool. All right. So this degree of Aries, zero degrees, about two of wands. And then if we talk about the Pisces, get down to portion, it would be ten of cups. So it's kind of like, you know, maybe you found yourself you held on and took charge to be in a relationship or some type of emotional fulfillment somewhere. And then two of wands just shows once again, collaborations, being able to like, all right, look, he looking at a globe, he's scanning the field. He got one uh, staff tied to his post, wherever he's staying, he got one in his hand. So it's like, he kind of looking out and, trying to figure out where can I go, who do I go with, what are the skills and habits and abilities I need, and then what do I, you feel me? Now, what what is that? Well, two of wands is Mars and Aries, so it just shows strong, bold, initiating energy. Strong, bold actions. Strong, uh, very strong courage and bravery. You think I'm saying? Just being bold. Going out, it's like, all right, look, hey, I mean, I used to do that. Um, like early, like when I first started my Mars Dasha, or like going into my Mars Dasha, I was at Nova. Too, I got that joint on now, but I was at Nova, and it was like I just finished therapy and shit. Um, he was like, nigga, it was like, man, you just kind of got like put yourself out there. I was like, hey, boldness, it's not, it's not, boldness ain't the issue. It's, I don't want motherfuckers to be acute. I don't like the accusations that I get. <laughs> Can you be too bold? And I'm not like super wild. Like what? And then that's Ten of Cups, Mars and Pisces, which is subtle spiritualized efforts and energies. A lot more, um, who the fuck are call Pisces? Not that we can say passive, but it's Mars. He ain't passive. But Mars and Pisces is a little bit more. It's adapting to it. So it's able to, like, he can't, 
he can adapt. His energy and courage and efforts is adaptable. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can adjust to it. It's Pisces, so it's almost universal. Universally, efforts is just received by people and everything hot. So sun already going to be in, like, I think it's 1030 sun is going to be in like zero, 29 degree, 59 degree Virgo, then zero degree Libra, exactly. So I just figured, and moon really still going to be in the 23rd, 24th degree of Pisces at that time, but I just figured we go here. So Pisces 30 degree is becoming our own ideal. Uh, Libra is a derivative of Aries. You know what I'm saying? So oftentimes, you know, you if you take inventory and get organized with your own abilities, attributes, and traits, and good strengths and weaknesses, you become that. You focus on those that you that's what you you we see more of that. You become that. You focus on your weaknesses or you know, like if you focus on the rejections or if you focus on the friendships that may have failed or the friendships that you may have not put so much effort into, then you become that too. And you'll be lonely as shit and you're gonna be a little sick in a motherfucker and your skin gonna be all like fucking not even really bumpy, but it's gonna be dry. It's like you'll be having bumps, but they dry up and they just turn to dark spots and something like that. You feel me? Or if you uh like if you white or Asian or something, you might get pop marks. You know what I'm saying? So we become whatever we idealize. What do we idealize? Venus exalts in this part of Pisces, but at the 27th degree, so, you feel me? Ideally, it's love. We want to idealize love. You feel me? We all need love, my nigga. And we all got to find the love of God and become that. Or you see what I'm saying? It really, like, kind of, just simply put. And then the zero degree of Aries, a woman rises out of water, a seal rises and embraces her. So becoming the essence seed of your soul's incarnation. Yeah, I, I feel that. Ravadi. <clears throat> Ravadi is about having broken the patterns of the past, you know, your childhood and, you know, those that came before you. It's the end of the zodiac wheel, but it's also like with all the signs, kind of like by the whole journey of the zodiac wheel comprises and finishes in here. So it's like, that's probably the reason why Ravadi natives really be like well received if they go to places outside of their home. Cause it's like the whole place in a way, it's like nigga, everybody, every sign from Aries to Pisces knows you. You dig on saying, glad to see you. We would love to guide you around the city. Ravadi is the psycho pump. The fairy men in Greek tales, it is Mercury in a way. It's the height of Mercury in a subtle way than the Chakra scheme. Kushan is Lord of the Travelers. He helped guide souls back to where they, you know, back to heaven and stuff. So the body types that I talked to, they was discussing it. They was like, yeah, you know, I go somewhere and people just, hey, what's up? You need anything? And it's like, uh, yeah, I kind of do. Uh, what that nigga reads to me, he said he, he went out. He had already planned to go out somewhere. And he ain't had no, like, nothing in any account. At the moment, he, he said, fuck it, I'm still getting on the plane. He got on that junk, touched down. He had enough money to move around. But when he got there, he probably still didn't have to pay for much. Like, it was just a courtesy kind of thing. It's a Jupiter. It is in a Jupiter sign of charity. So they get charity and they are charitable and very generous. I ain't going back. 
I worked with another Revati type. It was just like, you kind of see like, oh, money be slow as shit. The orders be slow as shit. And then soon as shorty come in, it's like, oh, shit get to picking up. You dig what I'm saying? And, and in other ways, it's like, they just kind of be about to beef in this. <laughs> And he's kind of be about to beef in this motherfucker, and it's like, and then you know, Shawty walk in, get to drag, not dragging, but Pisces guys, Pisces women slide their feet and shit. So, yeah, you know, she come in that zone and be like, oh man, it's really good to see you. All right, man, feel me? <laughs> I, I can't do this. I want to take his head off, but I can't do this in front of you. Um, let me step. Let me just step out. You feel me? I usually just be like, man, fuck that. You clock me out. But now nah, I be like, let me step out real quick. Come back. Gotta be slow to anger. You know what I'm saying? So becoming the essence seed of your soul's incarnation. So the first degree of Aries begins. We start to begin the deep exaltation of the sun. Sun is one soul perception and sense of awareness of the true reality in a way. So, <clears throat> sun exhausts in the 10th degree of Ashwini and Aries, right? But the exaltation has already begun. So, it's like you are becoming like, I. Right, so, I mean, you know, I'm becoming this and, or whatever it is. See what I'm saying? I wonder if you could decide like what that is based upon what Aries sits in your chart. So, if Aries in my 8th house, 8th house is... Eighth house could be your shamans. It could be your um, those that's in, engaged in occult sciences and stuff like that. So that would show like where it start with you and stuff. You feel me? Uh, da -da 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 -da. the vast majority of seeds are not germinated and so fail to realize their potential in the beginning. To become an individual, we need to emerge from the sea of the collective unconsciousness. To leave the womb. First, the desire is simply to be, because it is still far from certain whether survival itself can be attained. That's pretty cool. I ain't going back. You know, you, you, you might fall short of it. And then your next life or, you feel me, next phase of life, you still got windows and stuff like that. Like, I be trying, you know, not to say I'll be trying to tell uh, I got out of that, but I'll just say something. Like, How old are you? Okay, cool. Well, you know, you, 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 we all got a window of transformation. And depending upon how you take it, it could really, it could cause you a lot of suffering. Or it could really change things around, really set a stage for a brand new uh, era. Age in your life, you dig know what I'm saying? But that's the whole point. You really got to grow up. Yeah, not necessarily grow up. <clears throat> I like com you know, conventionally, you see, but you, you really got to change some things, your boundaries. Certain things got to, uh, have have they gestated? Do you get it yet? You think I'm saying, and those seeds that are not germinated. So, so Mars was born from the earth. Mars, efforts. We talk about Mars, full moon of Aries, right? Mars is in Cancer. Mars in Cancer, Moon in Aries. It's kind of it's a favorable influence. Like it's part of Vatana. Now it's Mars, Chandra, Mar, Mongo, Yoga. Uh, but Mars was born from the Earth. Like he came from under and beneath or the soil. Right? He came from the bosom of the Earth. So in order to grow, you gotta have, you gotta be putting efforts in. No bad. What's your efforts going to? You, you I did. Mars kind of will show survival of, like that. You just want to survive. You're just trying to self-preserve. It's uh, self-preservation. It's an arrow and a shield. His symbol is an arrow and a shield, or his symbol is just like a, uh, like a stick of an arrow or a lance or a spear and a person. So you just try and protect yourself. When you solve Mars, that circle shows softness. Mars types outwardly cruel, crude, harsh, mean, and bold, or whatever. But inwardly tender, soft, uh, sensitive. Big on saying, uh, in some ways, insecure. We talking about Scorpio. 
Aries too, but Aries got sun exaltation. They be cool. Um, they just getting in their own way. Uh, dig on saying that. So that's 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 Mars, but it's it's also like if you could look at it as a seed and the two cotyledon, right? So. No, God. Oh, am I not connected? If I'm not good, no, I see I am. It's just a slow jump. Don't even worry about it. Forty minutes is kind of crazy. Well, yeah, so Mars could also be the seed that sprouts its cotyledons. So that seed actually got to start even trying to root its own self. And it's got to go the path of Mars, which is to be born from the Earth. You think what I'm saying? The Earth, in many ways, man, so many ways, uh, especially like in primordial ways, like we talk about Gaia, even Boo Devi. Boo Devi was pulled from the waters, like by the Barbaraha avatar. I was reading that today. I don't know if it coincides and stuff like that. I ain't going back. I was just reading it. But, you know, pool. So, you, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. Like, and a boar is a, that's a voracious kind of animal, yo. Like, like they eat a lot, but if, if they feel threatened, they'll, they'll really come at you with everything that they got. And they give it everything that they got. Right, as it came up, see, they showing the inside of it, but you feel me? Self efforts, willpower, it's all like come from within, and in another vein, that's all like it's really God. Like, you don't rest, you don't, you don't quite know, it's like. Third house is derivative of eighth house and the fifth house. So it's like, you really kind of got to surrender your efforts to something anyway. You don't have to surrender your efforts. In the same vein, you create merit and good karma with good efforts. Right actions, I guess. You did. But you know, we not guarantee. What is it? A man's heart plans, but yeah, I would have to find that. My bad. I ain't really. I, I was trying to do a twenty minute thing, but the Lord establishes his steps. You don't know eighth house influence on their efforts. So you don't necessarily know what they might bring. You did my saying, but what you do get is a result of good karma and the grace of God. If I was influenced, so blessings, I uh, modern.